welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Gonna dream it, dream it, beat the someone out there listening. Everyone's got a voice to give and it's time I heard you whistling cause there's no point at all. Oh, oh, oh. And dream and small. Why, hey there, and welcome to episode 113 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. Thank you, as always, for lending me your ears today. I know you have lots of choices out there, and I really do appreciate you making my podcast one of them. I'm Jen, the host, marketing thought leader and digital strategist and coach for small businesses, and pretty much just an all-round small business lover with one business goal in mind, and that is to make you, small business owner, make marketing a priority in your business. Because I know if you want to grow, you simply need to learn to market yourself a little bit better. I know it's not simple, and it's not easy, but I'm here to make it a little bit simpler on the so-called Small Business Made Simple podcast. On my podcast today, I have one of my favorite humans and now one of my favorite guests, Catherine Mann. Honestly, this episode, I feel like I'm just laughing along with her the entire time, listening to what she has to say. And it's one of those episodes that I wish I could have shared the whole thing with you, the chats before and the chats after, because listen, it's just like listening to two old friends cackling away. She's hilarious and I think we're pretty hilarious together. Kat has a business called Wild Dynamics and her podcast, which you should listen to as well as this one, is called Community Heroes. Just let you know, episode 21 was pretty awesome because that was my episode with Kat. We talk so much on this podcast, but we are talking about things like what's your superpower and how do you find out what your superpower is and when you do find out what it is, what do you do with it? Kat has some really interesting takes on that. Knowing your superpower is one thing, but putting it into practice and also finding out the superpowers of your team, if you have a team, can really help build your business in a positive way. This is a great episode. I so enjoyed making it and talking to Kat. I hope you love it too. Um, She is just such an amazing human. I'm so very lucky to call her my friend. So grab yourself a cuppa and have a listen to my interview with Catherine Mann. Catherine, I'm very excited to have you on the podcast today and chat with you. I think you are just like such an amazing person to chat to and full of so many great ideas, but we're just going to come down to a few today. But for people who don't know you, can you tell my audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you so much for having me on, Jen. And you only get that from me because it's just, you know, you just beaming off me. That's it's just bounced straight back to you. That's just your awesomeness. But uh, no, it's always good fun. I always love chatting with you because, yeah, you're such yeah warm and generous with, with everything that you do. So it's always a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. All right. We can end that podcast here. That's all yeah, there is. Bit of a compliment for Jenny. The end. She's the, we're the best. We're the greatest. Let's go. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, Catherine, as you said, I'm from, I have an agency called Wild Dynamics, which I help business owners with lots of different various uh, assistants things I don't know <laughs> hey yeah uh, what's the right phrase I help within your know, marketing and socials and setting up and creating structure and uh, doing a lot of mentoring and coaching just to help people understand what it is that they're doing how it is their best to do it so that they get their processes their system, and everything's as optimized so that they can deliver the best results they possibly can so there's no one structure fits all in my eyes. Everybody and every business is highly unique. So I like to work with people in that bespoke way. So it's uh, more of a personal uh, service where, you know, I'm the one that helps you, you know, do the stuff 
build the website, build the profiles. You talk with me, I do the work. And so that's how I like to do things. And I uh, also have a podcast called Community Heroes where I just like to talk to awesome people doing cool stuff. (laughs) It is a fantastic podcast. I love it. It's one of my weekly listens in, although you do do it twice a week, so I don't always get to all of them. But um, you've had some amazing guests. And um, I know that, uh, you know, I've spoken a little bit lately about how great podcasts can be, both from the listener, but for you uh, as a podcast host to get to talk to people that you wouldn't normally get to talk to uh, unless you had a podcast. Exactly. Really, my podcast is all about me, you know. (laughs) Let's be brutally honest here, you know. (laughs) And it was, it was, I wanted a way to connect with, you know, amazing people. And I can't just ring them up because, you know, I might sound like a bit of a weirdo if I just sort of ring them and just want to have a chat. I'll just go, why would I do that? But if I invite them to be a guest on the podcast, it gives them some some exposure. It means that I've got some street cred behind me because, you know, I've made sure that I set up the assets properly uh, so that really, again, that was all about me. I just did it so that it was highly automated so I could be as lazy as humanly possible. <laughs> but what I love is the amount of comments I get. People go, ah, oh, that was just such a great uh, process of how you know I you you delivered that and I was like yeah I just did that because it was super easy but (laughs) you know it's effective and that's what you want your processes to be so not everything has to be uh you want them to be simple and effective and and clean and easy and you know to for them to work and be provide the service that they need to as well yeah, beautiful. And I love that your community heroes is about inspiring people with other people's stories. Um, you know, stories are just a, a, such an important part of people's marketing, uh, for sure. But one of the little things that um, I wanted to chat to you about was a kind of around people's stories. But I've heard you talk a few times about people's superpowers. People's superpowers, are, yeah, my favourite thing to talk about. <laughs> I'm just just a wannabe you know wonder woman I'm not quite sure what it is but it's because I have this you know inherent belief and and I know this is true that everybody has a very unique value to give to the world and that comes up from their experiences uh, and and they are the only ones that live their lives so they're the only ones that have these special unique uh, gifts and value and superpowers uh, to give out to the world and so what is what is a superpower yeah, and what is it there. and how you can how do you utilize it so for me I was I thought my superpower was you know connecting and selling I was very good in re, you know high-end retail and I could always get a new tech platform and work out how to use it and utilize it to its best ability very quickly so these are skills But what was my true superpower? And superpowers are something that you will feel so comfortable and so fabulous doing every single time, but also you'll get great results in and you'll make the other people that receive that value, uh, they will recognise it as well. And when I wanted to change things up, when I wanted to go back, I had to look back at my childhood and my past and really think about what was the activities that I would do without ever being asked? What were the things that I would do that brought me so much joy that I remember now as an adult uh, that I just loved doing? And so I grew up in rural uh, Victoria, in northeast Victoria, just out of Yakandanda. And I used to there would be neighbours. We lived um, down the end of the lane. And so I would spend my weekends and holidays riding my bike, going and visiting all the neighbours and just having a chat with them. And and it was that. And then also I remembered going into with my to work with my mum at the aged care facility that she worked at and just going in and 
you know, talking to the residents there purely because I wanted to hear their stories. And I loved and can still remember their unique lives. Um, yeah, just from, from having a chat with these elderly people and listening to them. And I was probably only nine and 10 at the time. Wow. wow. So it was this kind of um, these experiences, these things that have really, you know, shown me that talking and communicating uh, is one of my superpowers because it's something that I just love to do and will take every opportunity to do and which is you know it shows up in other areas you know I don't like online shopping uh, because there's no personal experience there it gives me the absolute irrits so I would prefer to take the time and go to the shops than ever just scroll through uh, hundreds of you know images trying to find the right pair of shoes. Yeah. 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 I think you and I might be the same there, but um, (laughs) I get too confused and give up, but (laughs) it can be a big challenge. Mm, mm, It can, it can for sure. So how does someone find their superpower? How does someone first step, you know, uh, your story was a great little idea um, for people to start looking back on their lives for sure, uh, you know, as to what they enjoy, what lights them up, uh, what could they do every day, I guess, even if they weren't being paid for it type of thing. But how does someone start, you know, trying to find out what their superpower is and when they find it, what do they do with it? Then, yeah, once you find it, then you're going to get brave and actually take it on, don't you? So it is It is about answering exactly all of those questions that you just said. What mm-hmm. lights you up? You know, what would you do without getting paid for it? They're all the same questions, but also I believe is our our superpowers and, and our why is really cemented when we were kids and all of those unique values and, and experiences uh, keep coming up and we just get better. We can get better at them. Well, of course we'll get challenged by them in some mm-hmm. areas, in some cases, but we always probably even without thinking find ways to get better at doing it uh, just because that's what we, we are born and, and are here to do. So I think looking back and taking some time to look at when you were a kid uh what did you love doing another thing for me is being out in nature I love being out in nature it's something me and my daughter my young daughter we do all the time we spend a lot of lockdown up the bush pretending to be fairies um (laughs) but some of my favorite memories are being down at the creek with my 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 friends and my brother and just playing in mud pies and just doing kid things but it was always just being outside yeah yeah, right. Um, what about for people who have teams? How how does it then, um, I guess, translate into uh, providing a better or a unique customer service experience or a unique uh, client experience because you know the superpower of your team and therefore you put them in the right roles? Am I kind of on the right track of how, you know, what this can mean once you find it out? Yeah, definitely. And I think this is one of the most critical areas areas businesses can really set themselves apart by taking that time to making sure that their team members are in the best place they possibly can be and that is getting them to understand themselves but as well as allowing them and giving them permission to speak up and let them know you know about what skills that they do possess so there's always been I've always sort of loved you know as elements of playing around with tech and learning that uh but you know it's something that I can do and understand but is it my superpower not so much so I can do it at a small percentage of the time but my superpower is connecting and communicating so I am more powerful and when I'm more powerful I'm better asset to your business and then you can utilize that in many other areas okay cool you can do that face to face how can we get you to do that online how can you connect with customers in a different way let's have a, let's have a go with you utilizing how you speak with customers and what it is that you say to them in our marketing strategies. So you're getting your most powerful salesperson working with your marketing people because that's when you can, you know, really get a cohesive um, strategy that's attracting the right clients and because they 
getting getting spoken to in a way that that just works yeah okay yeah uh, it's such an interesting concept of trying to put the right person in the right role at the right time for your customers and using that to help grow your business um I don't have a team. I, you know, I have a, a VA uh, who's amazing and, oh, my goodness, she's even more amazing to put up with my little scattered brain five days a week. But anyway, um, but I, I and I guess uh, some of my listeners are also retail-based, so they kind of don't have that sales team or that marketing team, but they're more I guess, on the floor, doing the doing, talking to the customers every day. Do you have any advice or thoughts around that for them as well, how to put the right person in the right role there? Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes it's it's really about opening up that conversation with your team and the people that you're working with as well. So making sure that the culture that you want with your customers is already the culture that you have instilled within your business as well. So that is empowering them to be able to come up with ideas because Mm -hmm. when you can empower your team, they're the ones that are your biggest asset to give you the greatest resources into um, how you can work best with with your clients and your customers. So, for example, I managed a high-end clothing store and I was there for half the week. The owners were there on the weekends um, and... I would sell quite a lot, especially uh, in terms of it was a very small town and, you know, there was a lot of factors in, you know, where I could, but I did it through conversation. So I really got to know how my customers like to be spoken to and worked with and the experience that they like to have in the store. And, you know, when I, you know, voiced this to the owners, it wasn't you know, taken on board very well. And, you know, people don't like to feel cluttered and when there's too much stuff around them, it can feel very um, constrictive and junky and then it doesn't feel high-end and nice and, they you know, like the bright... But, you know, telling my boss this, he's like, oh, no, you know, just he would always, yeah, bring in so much more stuff and I was forever taking it (laughs) out. And so it was this sort of battle of the wills of, ah, this is my store through the week, you know, get your junk out of here. (laughs) Um, But it was about so your people that are on the floor that are talking to your clients and your customers they are the ones that know them the best and they can also see what are what's the what's the path that your customers are taking when they enter your store and those are the sorts of um little things that you can really uh make a difference in a store because it'll keep either it'll make people stay within the store or they'll leave you know, atmosphere to me in a retail store is everything. And that comes from how you're greeted, uh, how the store aesthetics feel and the music that's getting played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my um, pet hates was having the radio playing and you'd be setting up this. Yeah, it's beautiful... not acceptable for me. <laughs> you'd have, the, you know, be setting up this beautiful customer service experience. And then, of course, the news would come on that would talk about some horrific things that happened the night before or the really bad damaging winds that were coming or something like that and completely ruin the mood for sure. Um, yeah. Probably like uh, the conversation that we've had, we've kind of uh, skipped through a few things today, but really the two things that keep coming up as far as theme goes is communication, whether that's with yourself or with your staff or with your team, and also listening, listening to yourself, listening to your staff, listening to your team. Like they're two really uh, powerful themes that keep coming out, whether we're talking about podcasting or whether we're talking about, you know, getting the most out of yourself or your business. Yeah, they are. And being able to listening with um, not being ready to respond, but listening to hear so you can actually digest what it is, so you can understand where they're coming from and be able to 
reciprocate and you know appropriately to what was said rather than just going oh I know what I'm gonna say next this is I'm you know <laughs> hurry up and finish your story because this is what I want to tell you you know because as soon as you go into that you've already lost the conversation yes yeah yeah you're not really listening to respond at all you're just listening you know waiting just so you can put your two bits in for sure um yeah yeah and it's listening with intent yes and it's a skill that sometimes needs to be learned i'm not sure that everyone is um, built to listen for intent but mm, it's definitely a skill that can be learned Absolutely. And I think it's also something that builds so many other key qualities and values uh, in with a friendship, a relationship, uh, with a team environment, because it builds respect and it builds trust and it builds understanding and rapport. And all of those things are needed to build a positive and, um, you know, environment that everybody wants to be in and I suppose my biggest driving force for being wanting to help businesses is to create businesses where the employees come in and they come in and they leave happy and feel fulfilled with the work that they've done as well as the employer so it's not one over the other it's everybody's leaving and going home feeling happy heard respected and that they've been their, their most useful powerful self within that role for the day yeah yeah oh very powerful stuff miss Catherine. very powerful stuff (laughs) it's all good fun in my eyes yeah well I think when you can get it right it could be good fun for sure but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that you know are, are desperately trying to get all those ducks in a row so to speak or really just even to discover their whys to why they're doing what they're doing um yeah And I think it's very, well, really, I'll share with you, like one of the things I started the podcast for was to do a bit of, you know, exploration myself because the biggest way I knew to do research was to have conversations because that's Mm -hmm. how I can do research. So I wanted to work out why some people are geared towards helping and how is that? How does that work? You know, why are some people so happy to help out in their community and give and do these things? And and where do other people, you know, how can we help them and inspire them to take that action as well? And your story was one of the ones that really, you know, light bulb moment and it stood out for me the why factor um bigger than everybody else's and that was purely because so many people have said I could have started by from bush business I could have done that (laughs) and and they all had that idea but the idea didn't stick enough for them to actually take the action and your story you had the why behind it because you had uh, emotion you had passion and you had uh, dedication to yourself to your husband and to wanting to support other women and families that were going through the same heartache and hardship that you were going through and that was your specific why that is so different to every other person that have I have heard and I've heard it from a lot (laughs) have you really okay (laughs) exactly that have said to me I had that idea Mm. but I didn't do anything on it and and lots of and an I for me ideas that's what they do they Mm. keep knocking on doors until they find the right person with the drive to actually do it and you had that because you had a specific personal story that gave you that you know that real fierce drive to make sure that you're going to be dedicated to seeing it through yeah thank you that's so lovely to say um but I don't think it feels like that and I think that's an important part to sort of start on as well is that you don't necessarily have these ideas and you're like whoa that's a great idea I'm going to do that it, it is something that just keeps knocking at you and even though like you know buy from a bush business for me it kind of it was more or less a week that it was just tapping on me, you know, while I was away and kept hearing the same problem, same problem. And, and from a marketing point of view, that's exactly what we should be doing is looking at the challenges our clients and our customers are in, and then what's the solution. And I guess be willing to do that. But I had 
zero idea what I was creating or what I was doing. I just thought I was doing something for, you know, maybe a hundred people or something like that. Uh, you know, and it really, and so I guess that's the important bit as well that, you know, it doesn't have to look like a big idea. It just needs to be something, I guess you're willing just to put out there and test and measure, which is what business is all about. Exactly. And we'll always, if we look hard enough um, and give ourselves that opportunity to reflect, we will find a, a common thread We'll find a way that really ties them all together. And sometimes, and you know, that can be with the work that we're doing, but as well as the people that we're working with as well. Mm, yeah. Goodness me. What a very, we went very deep there for a moment, Kat, <laughs> in our conversation. <laughs> yeah. Kind of feel like we need to say a fart joke or something just to, you know, like bring it back to. <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But I think that's the power of perhaps, you know, doing some research into your why, doing some research into your superpower. But um, so for anyone who's listening that just thinks, you know, this sounds like something I need to think about more or get study more or find out more about, what do you suggest for them? Oh, there's, there's lots of great resources that you can get. And there's lots of great resources that you can get for free. So, mm -hmm. um, you mean, you know, absolutely having conversations. It's, you know, I would ask people the question all the time, what do you like about me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that's a powerful what's, thing. What, what's my, what's, if you could, you know, sort of say one thing that was your favorite, if something about our relationship, what would it be? You know? Mm -hmm. and, and it was a funny question that I just kept asking people and I asked clients, I'm like, what is, how am I most helpful to you? Mm -hmm. You know, what is the thing that really stands out? And it's a, you know, it's having a bit of confidence and people are always happy to help. And, you, you know, we, we totally dismiss just how happy people are to give you help and feedback. Yes. Um, they really, it, it gives them a great sense of joy as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, um, yeah, that's look, Simon Sinek's a great one. It's uh, to go through. There are, oh, look, there is hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> um, but for me, I would just say if you if you write or however it is that you like to digest thoughts um some people can you know create videos other people draw whatever it is that you like to do get creative you don't just have to journal some people don't like journaling so yeah. uh, just write down you know what is what is my difference what is my why and just let the answer come to you and mm -hmm. also realize it's not just the one thing all the time either there can be multiple levels levels and multiple mm -hmm. layers uh, to it and a personal why and a business why can look very different too yeah, definitely. And and one of the things I just thought of while you were talking there was, uh, you know, if you happen to have lots of customer testimonials or people, you know, send you little messages to say thank you and things like that, look for the common threads there. If you're not game enough to go in out and ask them the question, actually look at the feedback you're getting and try and find some common threads there and work from there. Perhaps that might give you some hints. Yeah, exactly. Kat, this has been so interesting. Um yeah, just sort of blows me away a little bit, this whole, you know, it's not airy-fairy to try and find your superpower. I think it's actually something that could really help a lot of small business owners, um, not only with prof profitability, but, you know, getting their feet on the floor every day because, you know, we know that business can be tough sometimes, uh, but, you know, it's the passion that definitely keeps us going every day. If someone would like to get in contact with you, uh, you know, to have a bit of a more chat about this or a about other things in their business what's the best way for them to get in touch yeah you could visit my website so wilddynamics.com uh, I'm on LinkedIn Catherine Mann c-a-t-h-r-y-n just to be different <laughs> Mann m-a-h-o-n or you can yeah also check out and connect with me through the community heroes podcast website Facebook and we're on all the stuffs you know oh. so um all the stuffs so there, I'm not a great social media user, much to Jen's um, disgust. 
best, <laughs> but you know, I, I try, I try my best. I'm just yes. not, it's, that is not my superpower. <laughs> <laughs> Talking people face to face, man, I could do that a hundred times over then write a Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Cause we all need different superpowers. That's for sure. Exactly. Catherine, thank you so much for coming on and having this little conversation with us. I think it's something that I would love to talk to you a little bit more about. Maybe we need a part two to this podcast at some stage. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll create some, you know, a, an actual a structure, and then we can, you know, give some people, uh, you know, something that they can take away and do on the spot, <laughs> like a mini coaching session. I just can't yeah. see you and respond. Yeah, yeah, perfect. All right, thank you so much again. Thank you. Thanks, superstar. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, Connect with Catherine and, like I said, listen to her podcast called Community Heroes. All the links to Catherine's website and Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and her podcast are in the show notes, which, of course, you will find at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 113. But that's it. That's it for episode 113. I will be back next Thursday for 114. And I look forward to chatting in your ears then. Have a fabulous week with whoever or whatever it might bring you. If you're enjoying this podcast and you'd like to listen to it all the time, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And of course, if you have a spare 60 seconds, I would really love you to leave a rating and a review. Of course, share this podcast with another superstar business owner who's doing that daily grind and would really appreciate someone making their business life just a little bit simpler. But whatever you do, my small business peeps, remember, as my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. No point in dreaming small.